In this video, we're going to take a look at the malware traffic analysis exercise dated August 19th, 2021 from Brad Duncan at malwaretrafficanalysis.net. Hey defenders, this is Doug Burks with Security Onion Solutions. I started Security Onion in 2008 to provide a free and open platform to help you peel back the layers of your enterprise and make your adversaries cry. Today, Security Onion has been downloaded over 2 million times and is being used by security teams around the world for threat hunting, enterprise security monitoring, and log management. If you're a blue teamer, make sure you hit that like button and make it turn blue. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to help us reach 6,000 subscribers. If you have any words of encouragement for the Security Onion team, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. For questions and problems, please go to securityonion.net slash discuss and start a new discussion there. If you want to follow along, you can download Security Onion from securityonion.net and perform an import installation in a virtual machine using the instructions at securityonion.net slash docs. I've already downloaded the PCAP and imported it using so import pcap so at this point we can start looking at the alerts that were generated by suricata as it analyzed this pcap file this is the default view and alerts but let's switch to the ungrouped view and so this way we can see all of our alerts kind of at a glance with timestamps and we can also kind of see the, the sequence of events here. We can see that everything is kind of starting at 1940 and going all the way down to 2024. So if we start at the top, at the very beginning of our timestamps, and if we use our port numbers, we can kind of get a sense for which of these alerts are correlated together, which are related to the same TCP stream. For example, these top three alerts all have to do with port 49748. Notice in the first two, it's the source port, and the third one, it's the destination port. And that's simply because this third alert was written to look for traffic coming from the web server going back to the web client. So therefore, the IP and port are somewhat reversed from what we would expect them to be. Normally, we would expect to see a source IP address of this internal 10 dot address and the destination being this external IP address on the internet. But in any case, we can see very easily that these first three alerts are for the same TCP stream. So notice that for those three alerts, we have a dotted quad host PDF request. What does that mean? Dotted quad host simply means it was using a bare IP address instead of a fully qualified domain name. So it's somewhat interesting to see somebody requesting a PDF file from a bare IP address rather than a fully qualified domain name. We also see an alert for the curl user agent. And then we see an alert for a Windows EXE. So now that we know that all three of those alerts are for the same TCP stream, let's actually take a look at that stream and see what it looks like. So for any one of these three alerts, I'm gonna click on it and then go down to PCAP, and that's gonna take me to our PCAP interface, and that's gonna show me the entire TCP stream from start to finish. So here we can see the HTTP GET request for this PDF file. We notice that the user agent shows curl, and so that's why we saw that particular alert. We notice that the host header is for a bare IP address rather than a fully qualified domain name, and that was the reason why we got that particular IDS alert. And then we see the web server's response of 200 OK. It sets the content type header to application PDF. However, the actual file header shows MZ, and then we see this program cannot be run in DOS mode. We also see PE, so this does appear to be a portable executable, a Windows executable file, rather than an actual PDF. So there's enough interesting things happening here that this definitely looks suspicious. Now, a couple of things you could do since this is an EXE file, you could download the PCAP, you could 
extract the EXE from the PCAP. You could do some reverse engineering on that EXE. One of the things that we recently added in Security Onion is this ability to pivot directly from this PCAP view over to CyberChef. So let's do that. And so CyberChef is gonna show the hex dump up here in the input box. It's gonna apply the from hex dump recipe. And then the output, you're gonna see the ASCII transcript like we saw in that PCAP screen before. So now what we could do is we could do something like this. Maybe we might want to strip HTTP headers. And notice that strips off the client HTTP headers. Now we see that the output box shows a magic wand. And if we hover over that magic wand, it shows us that applying strip HTTP headers will produce the raw file itself. And so if we click that magic wand, it's gonna apply that strip HTTP headers again, and it gets us down to just the file itself. So at this point, you could save the file off, or maybe you just want to run strings on it. Well, you could run strings on it right here from CyberChef. And there we can see some of the DLLs that it references. and other interesting things about that particular EXE. All right, so now that we've looked at our first TCP stream, let's go back to our alerts view, ungrouped. So that was our first TCP stream. Let's look at our next stream, which is 49751. Notice again that there are two alerts for this stream. And we see that we have Fiodo Tracker reported command and control server, and also this OpenSSL Internet Widgets PTY alert. So let's take a look at this PCAP. Here we can see, sure enough, this Internet Widgets PTY, that's in the SSL certificate that's being transferred in this port 443 connection. Now let's take a look at our next TCP stream, and that's 49752. Here we see curl, and it looks like it's connecting out to this API lookup service. So let's take a look at this PCAP. And yes, we can see a user agent of curl connecting to this API to determine the IP address that the user is actually connecting from. Next, we'll take a look at stream 49767. We have two alerts for that. Again, we have the Fiodo Tracker command and control server and the Internet Widgets PTY alert, as we saw before. The next stream is pretty interesting. If we look at 49778, we have three alerts for that stream. We have HTTP traffic on port 443, and that's using the HTTP POST method. We have the attack response command completed, and we have the TrickBot check-in response. So this definitely looks like it's an interesting stream, so let's pivot to the PCAP. So here we see the HTTP POST we see the host header is a bare IP address rather than a fully qualified domain name. We see that it is clear text HTTP, even though it's connecting to port 443, which we would normally associate with HTTPS, but we don't see actual encrypted HTTPS here. So what we're actually posting is a task list. This is the list of processes running on that particular Windows box at the time. And then we see system info, operating system, Windows directory, memory, CPU information, IP configuration, domain information, lots of other interesting information that the adversary would love to have about this victim. After that, we see a series of alerts, again, for this Internet Widgets PTY certificate for this port 443 HTTPS traffic. So that's a brief look at the alerts that were generated by this PCAP. But one thing that we always want to do is think about how we could detect 
this kind of activity if we were dealing with sophisticated adversaries that were able to evade our IDS signatures. So for that, let's go over to Hunt. So if we click the drop-down box, we have all of our predefined queries here. So we might start with show all events grouped by module and data set. And this gives us a very high level overview of the kinds of data that we have that were generated by this PCAP. We see that we have some Suricata alerts, that's what we looked at before, but we also have a number of Zeek logs, including the connection log, the file log, DNS log, SSL log, and so forth. So now if we go back to our drop-down box, we can kind of use that overview to get an idea of what to look at next. So for example, we might go down to connections and we might say, show me all the connections grouped by IP and port. So here we can see all of those connections grouped by source IP, destination IP, network protocol, and destination port. And again, this gives us kind of a bird's eye view of all the connections in that PCAP. Now let's take a look at HTTP connections grouped by destination port. We normally associate HTTP with port 80, and so to see an HTTP connection on a port other than 80 is unusual. It's not to say that it's necessarily malicious. There are legitimate uses of HTTP on ports other than 80. However, this is one of those things that you might want to take a look at as you are hunting through your environment. Take a look at HTTP connections grouped by destination port, and you might find this kind of activity here. So we could include port 443. Notice also the HTTP method is post. We pivot to full packet capture, and this is one of the alerts we had looked at earlier. This is that data exfiltration of the system information. Now another way to find that would be HTTP grouped by method and user agent. So most of our HTTP traffic is going to be GET requests, but that particular piece of traffic was an upload, so it was a post. So you could find that using this query here. Another interesting thing to note is user agent. So most users on your enterprise network are not going to be using curl as their user agent. Most legitimate users on your enterprise network are not going to be using ghost as their user agent. So simply by looking at user agent strings on your network, quite often you're going to find some interesting traffic. We could look at HTTP grouped by virtual host. And again, we see those connections to bare IP addresses rather than fully qualified domain names. So again, that might be a, a hunting strategy for you on your enterprise network. Maybe look at the HTTP connections grouped by virtual host, kind of weed out the usual suspects and the fully qualified domain names and look for those outliers of HTTP connections to bare IP addresses, especially external IP addresses out on the internet. Next, let's take a look at our Zeek notices. So we have some notices here for invalid server cert, SSL certificate validation failed, and some of those were unable to get local issuer certificate. Some of them were self-signed certificates. Let's see if we can provide some more clarity here by drilling into one of these and then going and finding the notice sub message field. So let's group by that particular field. And so what we can see now that we've done that, we have this new column that shows those unique sub messages. And we see that quite a few of those are for Microsoft.com, but then down at the bottom, that's when we see those internet widgets certificates that are self-signed. So that's yet another way to detect this kind of activity is to look at your Zeek notices for self-signed certificates that are being accessed out on the internet. This has been a quick malware analysis using Security Onion. If you'd be interested in more in-depth analysis, take a look at our Security Onion training classes at securityonionsolutions.com training. 
We have a four-day training class coming up in Augusta, Georgia, leading up to our annual Security Onion Conference. If you sign up for the four-day training class, you get a free ticket to both Security Onion Conference and Besides Augusta. Finally, if you want to do all of this on your enterprise network, check out our Security Onion appliances at securityonionsolutions.com slash hardware.